saying, Um, Umgawa got the warrior power. Okay, this was Sunspot AR2767, and then 2768, 2769, and 2770. Or maybe that's 2770. Or maybe that's 2771. I don't know. There have been so many in the last week. I'm having a hard time keeping up. And I'm trying not to get cocky, even though two years ago I said I would guess the sun would wake up officially from its deep slumber in July of 2020. And we started to see a lot of these sunspots appear around that time. So uh, it's exciting to me because I believe nobody knows what the sun is going to do a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, or 30 years from now, man. And that has been my position for over seven years. Solar Cycle 25 strengthens. There's no longer any doubt. New Solar Cycle 25 is coming to life. The latest sign came today with the emergence of a new sunspot, sunspot group inset in this magnetic map of the sun's surface from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. So yeah, we've gone from 2767 to 2770 in a very short amount of time. And that is sexy, baby, because empires and kingdoms fall during solar minimums. And definitely the last few years have sucked donkey butt, bro, in my opinion. And so I am definitely ready for things to turn around, romance and comedy to return and people to start working together because everybody fighting all the time leads us nowhere except to destruction. Provisionally numbered AR2770, the sunspot has two dark cores, each about the size of Mars, and is crackling with minor B-class solar flares. Its potential for even stronger flares will become clear in the days ahead as the sunspot turns towards Earth, more fully revealing its magnetic complexity. Active regions from Solar Cycle 25 are now strewn across the sun's northern hemisphere. These are places where magnetic fields are intensifying, creating islands of magnetism on the sun's surface. So look, 2768, 2, 2769, 2770, and then you had AR2767 all within a, spirit, a period of 10 days. So that is definitely a sign that it is waking up, bro. You know, everybody's allowed to have their own opinions. I get that, you know, it's kind of like a gang war, and I'm one guy, well, I got Asteroid Fight Club, so. In the cases of AR2769, AR2770, the fields have intensified enough to form dark cores, that is, sunspots. A few days ago, AR2768 also had visible sunspots. It's a target-rich environment for amateur astronomers with safe solar telescopes. The appearance of so many regions active at once is a clear sign that solar cycle 25 is gaining steam however it doesn't mean solar minimum is totally finished these are just starter spun sunspots pip squeaks compared to the bemis expected when solar cycle 25 reaches its peak in a few years from now which is around 2025 solar activity should remain generally low despite this uptick in sunspot counts yeah but 2020 is a 2020 year man and 2021 is going to be pretty crazy too so I stand by my position that nobody really knows what the sun is going to do. Nobody really knows. I mean, our entire solar system is changing. And I would think it would be okay for me to be the single guy in the entire truth community who doesn't buy into the giant hive mind mentality. You know, I mean, the truth community can ha and afford to have different opinions, I would think. You know, this isn't like a, a business, is it? Although technically the other group is much better at business and getting views than I am, but I'm like, hey man, don't trust politics at all. And so not everybody gets the whole being in the middle thing. All right, so like when we look at, and this is like projected values on the sun, May it was still low, but in July you had, they were the predicted values were 1.4, we had a 6.3, and that's with uh, sunspots and activity. And then in June, Predicted values were 1.0, and the monthly values came in at 5.8. So both of the values for June and July really started to exceed expectations. And if we continue to see this, we could get one of the strongest uh, solar maximums in a long time. I mean, it is possible, bro, you know? And that is exciting to me, because who doesn't want to see the world improve, you know? we To get, like, a... A giant like 1960 value would be great or even like 
the astrology su suggests we're going back to like a 1776, man. No, oh, that wasn't the one. I'm sorry. Yeah, right around the 17, 1776, 1777, 1778. This is the astrology we're dealing with. So uh, I would much rather have society return back to doing great things, people working together, the return of rock and roll, a focus away from politics. You know what I'm saying? I mean, nobody wants the world to just keep getting crappier. At least I don't. So I think we're definitely going to exceed this, you know? We're definitely going to exceed expectations. And it's okay to have different opinions. I would think we shall find out. And it's okay to look upon things with wonder and know that we don't know everything. Definitely, in the last 10 years, mankind has become so arrogant, thinking they know everything about everything all the freaking time, and everybody's an expert on every single subject there ever was. It's okay to be like, man, I, I don't really, there's a lot I don't know. And that, that's when you're willing to learn. If you draw conclusions, then you're just trying to stuff whatever data comes out into your own pre-drawn conclusion. And plus, it's more fun to cover the sun when it's doing a bunch of cool stuff that's weird than when it's doing nothing. And clearly, the sun isn't just doing nothing. And we're going to see activity continue to increase for like five years. But who knows? That's a guess. Because like I said, Beetlejuice, which is a star in Orion, totally dimmed for like a couple months. And that was super weird, and nobody knows why. And few people really talked about it much. All they said was, oh my god, Beetlejuice is going to explode. And I got a feeling stars are pretty resilient. Much like human beings in 2020. Because if you've survived this long, you're resilient. And technically, you're my hero, and I'm glad to have you on Asteroid Fight Club. But I can definitely tell you that gangs get really mad at me when I point out that the sun is not just freaking flatlining. All right. We got all the planets on the same side of the sun, and today is supposed to be the start of the battle of the planets. And may the, may the may peace, love, harmony, unity win. I've been a big proponent of returning rock and roll and good music back to Earth. Lord knows we have a lot going on, and we could use all the help we can get. But definitely, there's a lot of imbalance in our solar system. We're looking for an uptick in earthquakes and volcanoes, earth eruptions, which I think we're seeing. And I hope you've gone outside lately to check out Jupiter and Saturn. They will be getting closer and closer to each other. And they've been doing a dance with the moon the last few nights. And it's always cool to see the ecliptic. Um, but, you know, we're going to be seeing a lot of wackiness. As this is a giant solar system event. This isn't just a political thing. This isn't just an Earth thing. It's a whole solar system thing, man. And so these two will be coming together. And, that, and they're getting past Pluto. I don't know, man. There's something about Plutonian energy that is just kind of wild to me. Well, what's weird is when I was covering the sun back in 2012, 2013, 2014, I used to have to fight Hydra and his old gang on Godlike Productions before I got kicked off. And so it's kind of like we're going back to the Mayan solar cycle of 2012 all over again. And it's kind of like the same battle that has been fought for eight straight years. And I'm still here, dude. And LC's noctilucent clouds begin their late summer fade. Northern sky watchers are starting to see fewer noctilucent clouds. New data from NASA's Ames spacecraft explain why. This month-long animation of NLCs from the spacecraft's SIPS instrument shows the clouds in retreat, withdrawing to toward total latitudes in the end of July. Sorry, dude. I've been covering hurricanes for like three straight weeks. My brain is fried like an egg. Um in an egg fryer thingy. But yeah, these are like meteor smoke cl clouds, asterisk. And we've been getting a lot of auroras due to intense solar winds from coronal holes. So, you know, it's exciting. And nobody knows what's going to happen next. And I'm sticking to that theory, you know? So let the good times roll, okay? Let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. And a happy full moon to everybody out there. Plus, happy Jupiter and Saturn in the sky looking all really cool. Um, a lot of times if I work long hours, my eyes get blurry. And then that helps me see the moons of Jupiter better. If you know what I'm talking about. And farewell to Comet Neowise. You are a really cool comet, even though I never got to see you with my own eyes. Uh, enough people saw it, chased it, 
got everybody excited about astronomy and comets and asteroids and stuff. So that's pretty neat. So you are a cool comet, man. And technically, uh, using Nostradamus, I predicted way back in like February that we might see a comet in July. So my July predictions all, all hit the target pretty much. That was neat, especially since I did a lot of them from uh, a long way out. Huh? This solar prominence was pretty dang amazing. That was on the sun for a couple days, I think. So yeah, the sun is just cool. It should be a place of mystery where we can all come up with our own theories instead of putting everything in a square box. You know, imagination. It helps lead to cool things, bro. There's so much we do not know about our solar system, our sun, our planets, you know? And, you know, it's like they send a million spacecraft to Mars and none to Venus or any other. Oh, yeah, look at that. That new sunspot is kicking. Yeah, when will we see our first X-class solar flare? I don't know. I made another prediction that one of my X-Men women crushes will show up and dip kiss me when that happens around then. So maybe soon, you know, maybe soon. Yeah, this thing is more active. And it looks like you got another one behind it. You know, this is 2020. We've had a lot of surprises in 2020. Ooh, yeah. That was a good one, dude. That was a good one. Oh, I love you, baby. And so why wouldn't, if, if every other sector has surprised us, why wouldn't the sun surprise us in 2020? Why would we count the sun out to not do some amazingly surprising things like everybody and everything else has done in 2020? You know what I'm saying? Usually when it makes an X, I'm like, that's an X class. But not, that's not always true. That might have just been a B class. Who knows? We'll have to check in. But that is exciting. See, exciting Sundays are returning. And so people who enjoy astronomy and solar science should be getting excited. I'm getting excited. Are you? I want to see it one more time. I'm definitely ready for a dip kiss, though. Man, I have, like, the greatest taste in women. Asterisk. Oh, yeah, because I'm not part of some sun science gang, I have to do a monthly fundraiser. And so, if you would like to contribute to keep Thor News up and running, if you would like a, a different opinion than the, like, opposi opposition and, wait, like, mainstream and then controlled opposition opinion, I would appreciate the support, though take care of your family, your friends, and your pets first. I got a snail mail, PayPal, Venmo, a Cash App, a Patron. Only $809 left to raise. Today's the last of the fundraiser. And I got to thank all of Asteroid Fight Club, all the cool people out there, and Teresa, Cynthia, Summer, Scott, Matthew, Glenda, Max, Arnica, Stephanie, Light Soul, Marlita, Lisa, Daryl, Brian, KJ, Dan, Bill from... As atmospheric defense team and the whole As atmospheric defense team. Thank you. JL, Fairytale Inc., Jason, Cynthia, Andrew, Janine, Ellie, Rachel, Athena, Marut, Robert, Caleb, Richard, Courtney, Summer, Angel, Damien, Angelique, James, Mike, Andy, Robert, Bennett, Matthew, Jess, Angel, Wagon Breath, and Dan. I appreciate all y'all are amazing. Thank you, Astro Fight Club. You guys are just, have been incredible to me for the last few years, and I super appreciate y'all. Everybody stay cool. Good times shall return again, and hopefully we will get to a teamwork stage in the near future, you know? And hopefully we'll all get some good dip kisses, because those are worth a lot, in my opinion. Okay, stay cool. God bless everyone. May the force be with you always, and let us live long and prosper together.